Shout hallelujah. A better hallelujah. The Lord is good. Greetings in the name of our Savior Jesus Christ. I thank God for your life and your families. And as you join us, I believe God will bless you exceedingly in the name of Jesus. Let's bow our heads and pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to talk about the good news, the kingdom news. We thank you because you have been so wonderful. You have been so gracious. We thank you for everything you have done for us. Even the things that we're not aware of. You fought the battles we're not aware of. You kept your promise. You preserved us. You took care of our destiny and your, your word never returned void. As we go into your word, we ask for your word to begin to minister to your people in a profound way. At the end of the day, take all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glorious God, wonderful God, miracle worker, King of kings, omnipotent one, we worship you, your majesty is forever. Lord, 
Most high, yes, you are the Lord. Most high, yes, you are, yes, you are the Lord. Most high, yes, you are the Lord. Most high, yes, you are, yes, you are the Lord. Most high, yes, you are the Lord. Most high. Father, we thank you because you are the most high. There is none beside thee. You are the almighty, the most high, the most excellent, the most gracious, the most powerful, most splendid. Father, we bow before your throne of grace. As we go into your word, minister the word of life to us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. We're looking at uh, what I call walking in divine favor uh, with the case study of Esther. Walking in divine favor. On Sunday, I was able to give you know, a couple of definitions about uh, divine favor. So divine favor uh, is like a spiritual lift. I spoke on Sunday, divine favor. Walking in divine favor is like a spiritual lift, a supernatural lift that takes a person from the valley, from the floor to the top, to the throne. Uh, Joseph was a case study of divine favor. He, 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 he rose from grass to grace. From a prison, incarcerated, you know, uh, impounded in the prison, and from prison, he found himself as a uh, you know, prime minister running the affairs of Egypt, an entire nation. Amazing testimony. And that testimony is only because God was with him. If we look at the book of uh, thing, uh, the book of Genesis 39, verse 2 and 3, the Bible speaks about that God was with him. Even though he was a, a slave in a foreign land, a very young age of 17, he was enslaved, but God took care of him while he was in Potiphar's house. And of course, we know what happened. He, he, was, he found himself in prison. Even in the prison, he was an overseer in the prison. God was with him as well. So uh, divine favor is a statement of God helping somebody, empowering you, enabling you. And you, when you are under that kind of atmosphere of favor, uh, there are some things that you know, you have uncommon likeness, uncommon approval, acceptance. And we saw that in the case of Samuel. Samuel had favor with God and man. In the book of uh, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 26, in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 26, the Bible tells us that Samuel had favor with God and also with man. Amen. I pray. And uh, likewise, Jesus Christ in Luke chapter 2, verse 52. The Bible says Jesus increased in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and man. In another version, they will say like, likeness. But it's even more a, more a likeness. It's kind of general acceptance. People accept you. People receive you. You know, there are places that you go, people don't want to see you. They don't want to even hear you. Your voice, your voice, you know, very irritating. But in the case of Samuel, his, 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 his voice was hard. He, he was given audience. He was approved in the eyes of man. Even the things that he said, came, all, most of them, all, all of them came to pass. So he had approval with acceptance with God and approval with men. And that is what divine favor is. But today we'll be looking at uh, working in divine favor with the case study of Esther. Esther, we know about the story of Esther, how they were, uh, they, they, they were enslaved. Uh, she was an orphan. They found themselves in the land of Persia, uh, Media. The land of Persia, Media is current Iran. Uh, Iran, the Iranians are patients, and some they have some medians, you know, in their midst, and they have 127 provinces, of which Esther at the time was a slave girl who lost her parents. The Bible says she was an orphan. She was an orphan, and then her uncle Mordecai, who would now became like a guardian that was overseeing the uh, the affairs of her life. So we're going to look at uh, some of the things. Uh, we're going to look at some of 
uh, the factors that helped Esther to walk in divine favor. So our objective is to look at some of the uh, factors that helped Esther to walk in divine favor. One of the factors that helped Esther to walk in divine favor, number one, is that Esther lived a life of righteousness. Esther lived a life of righteousness. In the book of Esther, chapter 2, I think from verse 7 or so, amen, you begin to see how Esther was brought into the picture. Esther came into the picture and uh, let's look at Esther chapter number 2, verse number 17. Esther chapter 2, verse number 17. And the king loved Esther above all the women, and she, ob she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins, so that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. Vashti was actually the, uh, the original queen, uh, the wife of Ahasuerus, uh, but because Vashti dis uh, disobeyed the king order, she refused to come out to entertain the guests to dance, amen, and because of that, uh, her position was declared vacant so that she would not encourage other women to rebel against the king and uh, she lost her place. Esther happens to be uh, known as Hadassah. Hadassah was her original name, her Jewish name, but her, her name was changed from Esther, I mean from Hadassah to Esther. Esther means star. You know, when your name goes with you, as a man, you know, like the, the, your name, if you look at your name, there's something that, about your name that backs up who you are. Amen. Like if a case of example is Jesus Christ, you know, for he shall be called Jesus Christ, Savior. He shall be called Emmanuel, God with us. He shall be called the Son of the Highest. And many other prophets have such names. Even in the case of Saul, his name was changed because Saul would not help him to preach the gospel. So his identity was changed from Saul to Paul. Abraham, Abraham, the same thing. From Abraham to Abraham, when God wanted to bless him, he didn't want to bless him with his ancestral idolatry name. He called him Abraham, father of faith. From Sarai to Sarah, mother of nation. So you could see the trend. In case of you know Jacob, and his name was also changed from Jacob to Judah, which means praise. So, you know, the prophets, Elijah, you know, uh, Elisha, many of them, you know, had prophetic names. So, the name Hadassah was her original name, was changed from Hadassah to Esther. Esther means star. So where we read, we saw that she was a virgin. I told you, number one, Esther lived a life of righteousness. She was a virgin. She kept herself. And because of she kept herself, she, the, uh, the parade of the, the ladies to come to parade before the king, before the king would make a choice, was based on virgins. So if you're not a virgin, you're not, if you're not qualified. In the case of the mother of Jesus Christ, the Bible said that the mother of Jesus Christ was also a virgin. And when the angel came to, uh, to, uh, 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 to, to, to Mary in the book of Luke chapter 1, verse 26 and 27, Luke, Luke chapter 1, verse 26 and 27, the Bible begins to talk about, you know, uh, the things that we are to occur. Woman, how thou are highly favored. See? So the, the angel, uh, God has to select among the virgins, she was favored among the virgins. Just like Esther was favored among the ten virgins that paraded themselves to be selected. And she happened, there's a reason why Esther was selected. But one of the reasons, one of the factors was she qualified. You know, sometimes you are going for job description. As they say, okay, if you have this certification, you have the first degree. So she had the degree. She I mean she had the, the qualification of being a virgin. If she wasn't a virgin, she would not have been enlisted because the king wanted a virgin. And among the virgins, she was favored. So she lived a life of righteousness. She kept herself. Josh, you may not be a virgin, but when you become born again, you are born again. You are born anew. You are like a virgin in the eyes of God. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Behold, all things are passed away, and all things are become new. So in the eyes of God, you have a clean state. Amen. Number two, the reason why uh, Esther also was... Uh, walk in divine favor is that Esther was raised by a noble man. He was raised by a man of nobility, a man that actually, you know, canceled her, that helped her, that encouraged her to, to remember her roots, to remember her, her, her father's ass. When Mordecai, I mean, when Haman wanted to, you know, uh, exterminate and kill all the Jews, he said, Remember. 
remember where he came from. Me, paraventure, it was because of such a time as this. That is why you have come to the throne. So she was raised by a man of nobility. He was raised by a man that taught her, that helped her to change her name. By the way, because the slave name probably won't have worked. Just like many people come to America, they change their local name. I'm not asking you to change your name, but if your name is a problem, then it means that you need to change it. Amen. If your name cannot help you to ascend to the level of glory, to ascend to reach your destination, then you need to change it. I've seen many people that change their Igbo name, their Yoruba names. You know, I know of one person especially that changes Yoruba name. I don't, I don't want to call his name. But he changed it because the place he was working at the time, he was so much promoted that he changed it to, to something Jackson. I don't want to call the first name. Hallelujah. Amen. Not to lose his identity, but he wanted to make it easier so that he can flow in the midst. Many people don't change their name and they are still very relevant. But in this case, Esther, as a slave, an orphan, changed her name so that even that name, Esther, backed up her destiny. Hallelujah. Amen. Number three, Esther... Esther also uh, was a, a, a person that followed instruction and direction. There was an instruction. If you look at the book of Esther chapter 4 verse 15, Esther chapter 4 verse 15, you will see that the, the king's chamberlain or the king's steward, you know, made a specific, there was a specific requirement that Esther had to follow. Among the ten, there was Praventor being a queen, the queen's chamberlain, or the, or I mean, being the king's uh, chamberlain, or the king's, um, you know, steward, or like a representative, she she must have known, you know, the things that the king wants. Look at Esther chapter number four, Mordecai, the answer, Amen. I will get the, the the scripture for you. I think that's not the scripture, but okay. Yes, so there was a specific thing that. Uh, Hegai wanted. Hegai was the king's chamberlain. There was something specific that she wanted and Esther followed to the dot. Esther followed to the letter. You know that the people, some people they get, you know, they don't follow through. There was a requirement for that vacancy that Esther followed you know, to that specifically and she was able to meet everything. All the demands. Very important. She was able to meet it. And because she met that requirement, she was now chosen. She was now what? Chosen. Amen. I pray that the Lord himself will help you in the name of... Look, look at Esther chapter number 2 verse 15. 2 verse 15. Now when the turn of Esther, the daughter of Abihel, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her for his daughter, was come to go in unto the king... It was her time to go and parade before the king. She required nothing but what he died, the king's chamberlain, the keeper of the women, appointed, and Esther obtained. Because of that, she obtained favor in the sight of all of them that looked upon her. So there was something that the king liked. The chamberlain must have, have, must have had some preference. Amen. And based on that preference, based on that, Esther only keyed, keyed in on what the chamberlain required. She just followed through. She obeyed the instruction. She obeyed the direction. And because of that, the king noticed it. And she was favored. So, the, the divine direction, divine obedience to instruction was one of the key that helped Esther to follow through, to be able to be, you know, obtain favor in the eyes of the king. Why? Because the steward must have known the things by association, by proximity to the king. Amen. She must have known what the king likes. You know, like if you have been serving somebody, you know the kind of food the person likes. You know the time he goes out. You know the kind of clothes he wears. So he must have known. So Esther was able to tap into the secret of the chamberlain, the steward, or what you call the you know uh, the king's representative. Based on that, she she did only what she required, not to add. You know, like sometimes some some places they give you job description. You do you, you go above and beyond. Going above and beyond can even put in trouble because they say, who asked you to do that? Amen. So many times, you have to look at the environment and find out what is required. Don't go... So above and beyond is good. They can help you. They can say you are doing... You are going... You are doing... You are working out of the box. You are helping the company. But in this case, you know, the king... You know, there are people who are very meticulous. There are some things that they like. There's a the kind of food they like. There's a the kind of... The way they like their meat to be done. 
and Esther followed through on that appearance and that was why she was favored. She was obedient and she followed through to divine instruction and divine direction of the king's chamberlain. Her name by her name called uh, Hegai. Amen. Hegai. H-E-G-A-I. Amen. Number four. Esther was a woman of prayer. When it was dawned on them that doom was coming upon the Jews. When it came upon them that you know, Haman, enemies of the Jews, was to I was about to exterminate all the Jews. Well, he even was about to kill all the Jews. Guess what? You know, she Esther now realized it. Say, wait, one, one, wait a minute. I've lost, she has lost her parents. And now she's the enemy was so close by. And she now pronounced a fast, a three-day fast. Amen. A three days fast is always recommended when you want to pray for divine intervention. Very important. She pronounced a three days fast. He said, go and fast for me. I myself and my maidens were also going to fast. No food, no water. Anytime you go out and, you know, go in the place of fasting, in the place of waiting and you call upon the name of the Lord, God will always show up. Hallelujah. Remember the, the you know, uh, Paul the Apostle when he became was blind for three days he did not eat he was fasting he was praying god told him go to ananias go to go to uh, uh paul he is praying he's fasting for three days he was blind how about joshua joshua was in the belly of a fish he rebelled against god when god asked him you know to go to a uh, and preach he changed you know his direction he chose to go his way to touch this while inside the belly of a fish where he was swallowed for three days he fasted jesus was also in three days under the earth so there's a mystery of the tree, amen, that's, that always breaks through or breaks the yoke or helps you to, to break through, amen. So Jesus himself went, was, under, was under, the, uh, under the earth for three days. Paul Apostle prayed for three days, fasted, no food, no water. Joshua, the same, I mean, I mean I'm talking about, uh, yes, um, you know, three days, no food, no water. Esther did the same thing. So the minimum that you can you want to inquire about the lord about something divine a breakthrough is three days fasting dry fasting and those principles will always break through for you in the name of jesus a queen who was living in affluence had to you know humble herself and go into waiting and as she waited upon the lord she obtained favor after that fast it wasn't even her turn to meet the king but because she has broken through in the spirit in the realm of the spirit the king was even asking, you know, him, asking her what she wants. Remember, Ab you know, Abraham also prayed. After prayer, God granted him favor. Abraham also what prayed. After prayer, God granted him what divine favor. I pray that as you begin to pray, God will grant you divine favor in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's look at Genesis chapter eighteen, verse three. Genesis chapter eighteen, verse three. This was an encounter with the three angels. Genesis chapter 18, verse number 3. Abraham prayed and asked, if he did not pray, if he did not beckon on those angels, the angel, he wouldn't have come. Amen. I'm, look, I'm reading Genesis chapter 18, verse number 3. And said, my Lord, if now, and said, my Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away. I pray thee from thy servant. He began to, you know, make Require you begin to ask, you begin to plead, the place demand. That's prayer. You know, there are different kinds of prayer. Prayer is not only when you go on your knees. There are different kinds of the prayer of adoration, persuasion, binding, losing. This one was a prayer of you know beseeching the Lord to come and you know he, he, he wanted to uh, they, 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 you know, like they said, a way a prophet in those days when they hear a prophet coming, they want the prophet to walk in because you know, they when the prophet walks into their house, they have a presence, they destroy yokes, they lift burdens. Hallelujah! So, in this case, the angel came in and sat down and ate with Abraham, and right there, he blessed him. And after blessing him, we know the name of the story. So it was favor. That favor was activated in the place of prayer. Esther did the same thing. Esther fasted and prayed. And after prayers, Esther had favor. Had favor with what? With the king. Amen. Number five. Esther was also very bold. Esther was very what? 
bold. One of the things that helped Esther was she was bold. You see, when you pray, the Bible says the righteous shall be as bold as what? As lion. When you are, when you are righteous, she was only righteous. When you are prayerful, it, it gives you boldness. The Holy Ghost empowers you. The Holy Ghost helps you. Look at the book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16. Amen. Paraphrasing, the Bible says that we should come to the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and find favor in the time of need. And find favor in the time of need. So Esther was able to find favor. It was a very needed time. It was a very present time. It was a very challenging time because Haman has already gotten the decree signed by the king, Azeros, to terminate and exterminate all the Jews in the 127 provinces. He got everything signed. If not for the fast. You know, if not for the prayer that broke that yoke, Haman would have gotten his wish. Because, you know, he was occupying a post that was meant for Mordecai. And that was why every other person was bowing down except Mordecai. Mordecai would not bow down, he, you know, to, to Haman. Amen. So, you see, in the Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16, it tells us clearly, it says, it says, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may what? Obtain mercy. Esther obtained mercy from God. And, uh, and that we might find grace. That grace means favor. Grace means unmerited favor. That we might obtain, obtain grace to help in the time of need. So that favor, that grace that Esther obtained, she got it in the place of prayer. She went to the throne of God. She fasted. She prayed. And that gave her boldness to go. He said, come boldly. Let us therefore come what? Boldly unto what? The throne of grace. So Esther was bold. You see, when you are righteous, when you know the God you serve, you'll be very bold. And that was one of the prayers Paul the Apostle prayed that God that God should give them boldness to preach. Bold. You can go anywhere because you are empowered, you are enabled. There's a quickening that comes upon you. There's an enablement. There's a there's 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 an aura that comes upon you that helps you, and the Holy Ghost pre speaks through you when you are bold. And that was what helped uh that was what helped. Uh, Esther to go in the presence of the king to ask for that favor. And she got that favor. Amen. She was favored in the eyes of the king. She, she obtained favor in the eyes of the king. You can also take a look at uh, the book of Esther chapter 2 verse 8 and 9. Esther chapter 2 verse 8 and 9. I think we read that area. But let's take a look at it again. Esther chapter 2 verse 8 and verse number nine. The book of Esther chapter two, verse eight and verse number nine, I read. So it came to pass, so it came to pass when the king's commandment and his decree was heard and when many maidens were gathered together unto Shushan, the palace, to the custody of Haggai, that Esther was brought also unto the king's house. In fact, it's not just kindness, it's an unusual kindness. Favor signifies, you know, uh, unusual word, kindness people you know want to help you you don't know why they want to assist you you don't know why they want to bless you you don't know why it means that something helping helping you is called divine favor or merited grace amen esther had that so number one esther lived a life of righteousness she was a virgin and that helped her you know to be favored among the ten virgins number two esther was raised by a noble man so she was a woman of character she was a woman well prepared. She even changed her name, you know, from Hadassah to Esther. And Esther means that. Number three, Esther, you know, followed divine, followed instructions and directions. You know, that hair guy, the king's chamberlain, that knew, that knows everything about, you know, King Ahasuerus. Amen. Number four, Esther was a woman of prayer. And when you pray, if you pray, you have favor. Amen. I was all like in the case of Abraham. Abraham prayed and she had favor with the angels. Amen. He ate with angels. Now, number five, Esther was very bold. The Bible said that we should come, you know, boldly to the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and find favor in and, and find favor in the times of need. Amen. So, and Esther obtained favor and in the time of need, when she was needed most, she showed up, she prayed, she fasted and she went to the king boldly and she obtained the favor. And I pray that you will obtain favor also in the name of Jesus. So, you know, Esther stood in the gap for her generation. She stood in the gap, gap for, her, for her, her people. 
she knew she was a, a, a Jew. She knew she was a Hebrew. She knew she was an orphan. She knew, she knew that you know that uh, probably if she had not even fought for her people, she would have been alive. But she she remembered where she came from. She she was able to. She knew her roots. She was well raised. So she stood up for her people, defended her people, and Haman, the, on the outcome, the gallows that Haman dug for Mordecai was, you know, Haman was hung with his sons in that gallows. I pray in the name of Jesus, every gallows that the enemy has dug for you and your children, shall, they shall enter into that gallows in the name of Jesus. Every pit organized for you, every trap organized for you shall catch the owner in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. So I just want to give somebody an opportunity to know Jesus. If you have never met Jesus, you will not be able to, it cannot be bold. You cannot come to God because the Bible said the prayer of a sinner is an abomination. So if you want to be favored in your place of work, be favored. The Bible, even as a man, you are believing God for your spouse. You, are, you don't know, you know, I've seen people that say, oh, pastor, please help me. Uh, I've tried so many things. I can't find a woman. You know, some people, they are very good at when they make dating, but when, they, when it comes to getting married, the, the word of confusion comes upon their head and everybody seems to be the same. And, uh, you know, these days, nobody is ugly. Everybody is beautiful. Amen. So everybody has makeup, they have mascara, they have a, you know, all this Brazilian hair. So she, he's completely confused. He has no clue. He has no direction. So, but I told him there's a way to find a woman. It's called a way of prayer. You, but you cannot pray to God that you don't know. You cannot pray to God that you are almost, you know, working against. That is why you need to make peace with God so that when you pray, you'll be hard because you're a prayer of a sinner actually is an abomination. So, I would like to give you an opportunity if you have never met Christ, if you have not given your heart to Jesus. Amen. Because what shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Your soul is most is, is, is the highest treasure on earth and even in heaven. Jesus Christ said, what can a man give in an exchange for his soul? It means that some people have exchanged their soul. But David said, for he restored my soul. But eventually you are born again, but you have, you have your back. God has the capacity to restore back your soul. And that is why I would like you to pray after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner that needs help. I come before you and I ask for your mercy. Forgive me of my sins. Help me, Lord Jesus. Write my name in the book of life. I believe you are the son of God and God raised you from the dead. Friends, family, if you have said a prayer, you are a child of God, you are born again. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, now you are in Christ, you are a new creature. I pray in the name of the Father, by the power of the Holy Ghost, that God will give you grace to live above sin, to run a glorious race, to fulfill your destiny. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. A believing and better amen. And you can also send us email, you can also... Uh, as well, uh, send us texts. We would like to pray with you, encourage you, uh, uh, follow through with you so that you can be able to stand in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout a big amen. There are some prayers I would like us to pray, and I would like us to pray so that God will help us to usher us into that realm of favor. The first prayer I would like us to pray is we are going to declare, say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I receive the grace to walk in righteousness. To walk in righteousness. That, that's one of the things, the criteria that helped Joseph. Joseph said, I fear God. Amen? The reason why God was, 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 with, was, was Joseph because Joseph feared God. Amen? So we are going to pray, say, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I receive the grace to walk in righteousness, to live the right, to live upright, to do the right thing, to follow, the, to do, do, do the will of God, the kingdom purpose of my life. I receive grace to live right. I receive grace to walk in uprightness, to walk in holiness, to walk in impurity of heart. Lord, I receive the grace. Open your mouth and declare it. Say, Father, I ask by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus, I receive the grace 
to walk and live a righteous life. The Bible said the righteous shall be as bold as lion. The Bible says seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All other things shall be added unto you. Father, we pray we ask for the grace to live right, the grace to be upright, the grace to walk in righteousness, the grace to walk in transparent holiness, the grace to live and walk and worship God in spirit and in truth. Pray and open your mouth and begin to pray. Ask God. The Bible says, ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, and knock and the door shall be opened. Pray and ask for the grace to live right. Empowerment, enablement. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray and ask for the grace to live right, the grace to follow, follow you diligently the grace to do the right thing in the name of Jesus. Mazalabo Sata Kalababuzite, Zebabo Shata Kala Kebabo Sata, Karabu Sete Kebabo Zande, Zezata Kababa Shate Kelaba, Zuzate Kababo Sete, Ribabo Zutu Baba Shata Kalaba, Zezate Kababo Zate Kalababa, Rekazata. Pray from your heart, cry to God, talk to God. Yes, to follow. Abundant grace to follow, sufficient grace to follow. Your grace is enough for me, Father. Give me grace to follow, sufficient grace to follow. Abundant grace to follow. Your grace is enough for me. Give me grace to follow. Abundant grace to follow, sufficient grace to follow. Your grace is enough for me. Give me grace to follow, sufficient grace to follow. Abundant grace to follow. Your grace is enough for me. Give me grace to follow. Abundant grace to follow, sufficient grace to follow. Your grace is enough for me. Give me grace, Jesus. Abundant grace to follow, sufficient grace to follow. Your grace is enough for me. Hallelujah. You will receive the grace so that you will not be disgraced in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You're going to pray. The second prayer you're going to pray. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I connect. I connect to the unction in the life of the noble man. I connect to the auction in the life of Jesus. Jesus was very noble. Lord Jesus, I connect to the unction, the power. There's a power in the name of Jesus. There's a power that make him to become, the Bible says he grew up in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and man. The same thing happened to Samuel. Samuel also grew up. He increased in stature. He increased in wisdom. He had favor with man and he had favor with God. You are going to pray, ask God for the grace to, to walk in in the steps of Jesus Christ to be like him. He's a hero. He's, he's a noble savior. We're going to pray, say, Father, I receive I connect to the unction in the name of Jesus Christ. I connect to the unction in the life of Jesus. Jesus was very noble. Well, this time we're not going to pray about Mordecai. Mordecai was noble, but connect yourself to Jesus. Connect yourself to the grace. Connect yourself to the name of Jesus. Connect yourself to the power. There's power in the name of Jesus Christ. There's, there's unction in the name of Jesus Christ. There's oil in the name of Jesus Christ. Connect yourself to the unction that helped him to live above sin. Manabo Sata, Kebaro Sente Kabakara, Ruba Shete Kebo Zetin, Zobaba Shata Kalaba, Zoba Shente Kebo Rubuzetikala, Zebaba Shete Kubalaki, Rakaza Kazuko Zoki Balakia, Father Lord, I connect, O oh Lord, to the power, the unction, the oil in the name of Jesus, the nobility in the name of Jesus Christ, the power, the character, the grace, the name of Jesus Christ comes with power, come with grace, come with healing, come with revelation. Father, I connect to the power. Power. I connect to the nobility in the name of Jesus Christ. I connect to the power in the name of Jesus Christ. Let that name work for me. Let that name empower me. Let that name enable me. Let that name help me. The power in the name of Jesus. Lebabo shata kalabo. Zebaba shete ke. Rebabo sata kaki. Rebabo sote kala. 
leba bo shata kela bo leba bo sate kaba shata zomba la ba shete kora kiyaraba zuza taka mehana la bo kozete pakare bo setiga kubra zande kebo seteka kubri hana la bo zati zekara bo zende zuza taka kibaba santa kala bo kihande la bo zetekele in Jesus name we pray. When they saw Peter, Peter was a fisherman, and how as spoken he was, how bold, how flint he was in, in, in dispersing the gospel, they were amazed. But they remembered that Peter, they have been with Jesus. So by impartation, there was an impartation that came upon them because of their proximity to Jesus. So we need to be very close to Jesus. How can we be close to Jesus? When you are fully redeemed, when you are fully, your, your life has been transformed by the word of God. Amen. When you live for him, when you are very close to the word, when you are very close to the Holy Spirit, your best friend, then your life will be reformed and transformed by reason of close uh, pro, uh, proximity. Amen. Number three, you are going to pray. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, help me to follow divine instruction. Hallelujah. Help me to follow what? Divine instruction. In fact, in the case of uh, Esther, she she's observed what her guys you know stated, and she did only that which she required. So we are going to pray. There's a requirement that heaven is asking us. So we are going to pray and ask God, Father, in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Ghost, help me to follow divine instruction. Help me to follow, to hearken diligently to the voice of God and to follow divine instruction. In the name of Jesus, Abraham obeyed the voice of God when he was told to go and sacrifice his son. He rose up early in the morning and took Isaac, his son, and went to the, the mountain of Moriah to sacrifice his son. Divine instruction. Amen. Peter followed and obeyed divine instruction. She, he was even hesitant. He said, I have toiled all night, but nevertheless, at thy word, he was he obeyed divine instruction. So we are going to pray, say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, help me, empower me, increase me to follow divine instruction. Ask God to help you. Ask the Holy Ghost to help you. Ask the Holy Holy Spirit to help you. He said, without me, you can do nothing. Ask for divine empowerment. Ask for divine enablement. Ask the Holy Ghost to help you to hear and follow divine instruction to obey God diligently, to obey God faithfully. I receive that grace to obey the voice of God, to obey the word of God, to the letter. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray. Parabosu te kakaze te keza Rababa shataba kila kaza to Rebobo se te kekeze te Yababo sa te kebo si takala Rebaba shete kele keze keze To koziti pakali kaze tika Shakala kaze kuzu to Rekaze te kazu te keba ba jeba Le keze keze te Zuzat te keba ba jeba la kaze keze kele Rekako ba jeba kela ki ya raba ze te Zuzat te kebo je kila Rakaze te kuba jeba Le baba se te baba shebo leke se te Zuzha te ke se te kuba shebo leke se ke se ke leko se ko se ki la Re baba shoto ki bala ka se ko se to Janga la ka se ko se ki bala ka se ki se ki pilo ko di Re baba shebo leke se ke se ko loko leke se ki leke se ke leke se to Zha se te ke ba leke se te ko se ki Ra ka se te kuba shebo leke se te Zuzha te ke bo se te ke la ko se Ru ka se ka la ka se ko se ko se ki leke se ke le Ru ko se ke se ba se ke leke se te Zuzha nda nga la ko ki bala ki Ra su te ki ba se ti ba la ka se ku Ra ka ka ba shebo leke se ke leko se to in Jesus name we pray in Jesus name we pray it takes it takes divine empowerment to obey God it's not as easy as you think Saul obeyed God but it was a partial obedience and because of that incomplete obedience is equal to disobedience and disobedience was, re, was referred to as witchcraft, rebellion. Amen. He was told, go and utterly destroy the Amalekites. They were the people that did not allow you to pass through their land on your way to promised land. Go and exterminate them. He went. He actually defeated them. 
he actually defeated the Amalekites. But he took Agag, the king of Amalek, and brought the sheep for sacrifice. God told him, I'm not interested in sacrifice. I'm interested in obedience. So God wants obedience, not sacrifice. Amen. God is interested in your obeying the voice. Abraham obeyed the voice of God and he was, he was called a friend of God. So we need to obey God. The grace to obey the voice of God, to obey the Holy Spirit, to obey the word of God. That's what you need. That is what makes the difference. You are going to ask God again, Father, I receive the grace, the enablement to obey you. I receive the grace to completely obey you, to completely hearken to your voice, to be diligent in obey your voice. I receive that grace. Open your mouth and declare it. Father, I receive the grace to be diligent in obedience to your voice, into obedience to your voice, to the obedience to your word. Malabo shatakalaba, jaka lekaze tekuba, lekazo teba wa shatakala kuzeti, rakaza takuba jebe lekaze te, zosa teka kaluka zeti, rabo shateba kali, jaba leki zatika, kubara kaza teke zete kuzati, jaba lekaze kezeke lekezeke le, raba ba jebe lekezeke zutu, rakazo kuzoko teke ba, yaba ba jebe lekezo kuzoko le, rakaze kezete koleki la, rakaze kuzoke ba lekaze kezeke le, rabo shetike la kuki bara satan. In Jesus' name we pray. In the case of Samson, it was a very sad, sad end. He started very well. There was a prophecy about Samson. In fact, angels announced the birth of uh, Samson, the coming of Samson. Amen. You know, he was about among the privileged few that angels announced their birth. If you look at all the prophets in the Bible, it was people only like Zechariah, Jesus Christ, and Samson. I mean, I think that's about it. That the angels announced their birth. In, in the case of John the Baptist, he was anointed with Holy Ghost from womb. In the case of Jesus Christ, he was anointed with Holy Ghost from womb. In fact, his own conception was by Holy Ghost. And Samson was one of the privileged people that, you know, the angel announced the, his birth. But yet, all the instructions, the things that he was told not to do, don't put this on his head, don't marry foreign wives, the things that he was told not to do was what he did. He, he lost it after 40 women. The Philistines, they were arch enemies of Israelites. And that was what, that was his demise. That was what called, you know, brought his downfall. So you must obey the voice of God. Say, don't intermarry with the Samarians. Don't intermarry with the foreigners. Don't un be unequally yoked with unbelievers. And he, he, he disobeyed. He, he, he disobeyed the, the laws of God. And that was why the enemy destroyed him. They will not shave your head in the name of Jesus Christ. I said they will not shave your glory in the name of Jesus Christ. So I'm going to pray, number four. Say, anointing, anointing to pray and fast. Anointing to get results. Let it fall upon me now. And there's one thing to pray and there's one thing to fast. And there's another thing to get results. Say, anointing to pray. Esther had results. After prayer, after fasting, she was granted audience. She was favored. She wasn't supposed to be granted audience. But because of prayer and fasting and God's divine favor was upon her, she received grace. She obtained favor in the eyes of the king. So we are going to pray. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I receive and truth. So you are going to speak and declare. You are going to talk to the Lord. You are going to call upon the Lord. You are going to ask the same prayer point that Paul the Apostle prayed that I might have the boldness to preach the gospel. Even while he was in prison he was asking for prayer prayer requests. His prayer request that God will give him boldness because they, they want to intimidate you. They want to make you to be ashamed. They want to make you to think that what you are doing is on the right course. But a better amen. My God is good, 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 is good to me, my God is great, my God is my God is good, my God is my God is good, my God is good. Is good to Jesu order, Jesu order, Jesu order, Jesu order, Jesu order, Jesu order, order for me, Jesu order, Jesu order, Jesu order, Jesu order, 
Jesus Odara, Jesus Odara, Odara for Chineki Dima, Chineki Dim, Chineki Dima, Chineki Dima, Chineki Dima, Chineki Dima, Chineke Idin, Jesus Odara, Jesus Odara, Jesus Odara, Jesus Odara. Jesus Odara, Jesus Odara, Odara for Abasya man 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 for Ama for for me Chineki Dima Chineki Dima Onye na Gloria. Akanemema chineki dima chineke idima. My God is good. My God is good. My God is great. My God is great. My God is good. My God is good. Is good to me. Heavenly Father, we thank you because you are so good. You are so sweet. You are so splendid. Accept our praise and thanks and prayer requests. Let them become testimonies. Let it become visitations, encounters, revelations, divine advancement, divine acceleration, breaking through and breaking forth. Thank you. I will pray for anyone that is, you know, sick in the body. We ask for the healing power of God to come upon you right where you are in the name of Jesus. I declare that by his stripes you are healed in Jesus' name. Thank you, mighty God. Blessed be the name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. A believing and better amen. amen. Hallelujah. Will be all that you are believing God for. Kingdom purposes, kingdom plans, your marital plans, your children plans, your business agenda, your believing God for things, healing, everything that you are, you are, you are believing God, you know, you just table them down and let's use prayer to push them through into full uh, manifestation and realization in the name of Jesus. So we're waiting upon the Lord till uh, 6 o'clock. So every day from tomorrow, 5 to 6, we'll be praying and uh, beseeching heaven, placing demand on heaven, and asking God for uh, to answer us, to hear us. Amen. And as we do so, he will bring, completely bring our request to testimonies in Jesus' name. So again, on Friday also, we'll have a night vigil. So Friday will be here twice, 5 to 6, and then uh, from 12 midnight. So uh, this week is going to be a prayer week, praise week. And I pray that you join us to, and stand in the gap. Join us as we, as we knock on the doors of heaven. And I believe, God, that there will be great testimonies in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout a big amen. amen. Hallelujah. Let us share the grace in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely God's goodness, God's mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in God's house, God's presence forever and ever. Amen. A believing hallelujah. Divine favor, visitation hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. See you tomorrow, same time. Bye now.